The mind is like water. When it's turbulent, it's difficult to see. When it's calm, everything becomes clear. You're listening to the Wisdom Worth Knowing podcast. I'm your host, Craig Chamberlain. If it's your first time joining me, welcome. Thanks for trying this out. You can follow us on all the major social networks, including Facebook, YouTube, and Rumble. You can also follow the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. The show is brought to you by Audible, where listening is the new reading. Get unlimited access to thousands of audiobooks, completely free for 30 days. Sign up right now at audible.wisdomworthknowing.org. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot wisdomworthknowing.org. Cancel any time. No money obligation. The mind is like water. When it's turbulent, it's difficult to see. When it's calm, everything becomes clear. This is a more vague quote. I have no idea how popular this episode is going to be, because even titling the episode was very difficult. But a lot of these quotes come from the Facebook pages to what is most popular. Obviously, making this quote smaller was kind of difficult for me because it's a longer quote. But I, I do know for a fact that this is probably one of the better ones to come out of, of all the collective ones we've shared. I'm actually looking forward to talking about it today. So, the mind is like water. I, I generally like that opening line. Because if you think of water in a stream or a river, it's always moving. It's constantly moving. And there's also different parts of a river, if you visualize it, depending on the size and scope of the river, of course. Some areas are calm, clean. Other areas are really agitated and messy. Some are just rough. So depending on what part of the river you come across... You may find yourself in a situation in which it's either incredibly dangerous or incredibly safe. Like the quote says, when it's turbulent, it can be difficult to see. When you look at water that's getting splashed around and hit and and shaking up all the soil from the ground and it gets really dirty and you try to look at the bottom, you can't see through it at all. It's really, really dirty. But when it's calm and smooth... You can generally see through it to the bottom. When it's calm, everything becomes clear. I have personally wrestled with an anxiety disorder my whole life. And it's a lot better now than it used to be. When I was younger, it was significantly higher and more pronounced. You know, panic attacks, that kind of stuff. And a lot of anxiety is normal. And if you do struggle with anxiety, dealing with that is a, is a, it's a not, first of all, it's very common. A lot of people struggle with anxiety. Second of all, it, it, there's nothing wrong with speaking to a professional about it. They may help you navigate that, whether medicine's appropriate for you or just emotional tools to help you cope and deal with anxiety. There's a lot of good books on the subject as well. From Panic to Power is a really good one. An unquiet mind, that's a very good one. Battlefield of the mind, that's a great one. Just trying to think of a few more here. From panic to power, that's another good one. But the reason I'm bringing up anxiety, because I think it does epitomize this quote really well, For a couple reasons. Anxiety disorders generally stem from adrenaline. So what happens is when we're in a panic state or something real or tangible happens or we perceive something dangerous and damaging happening, our bodies get pumped with adrenaline. And for those of you who have never looked up the effects of adrenaline on the body and you struggle with even remote small issues of anxiety... Google that immediately. 
Google the symptoms of the fight and flight response. Understand the chemical aspect of panic. The sooner you understand that, the better. And this is true for, I think, everyone. Even if you're just dealing with somebody who has high levels of anxiety. Because adrenaline triggers a response. It's a fight or flight response in us. And we do not think clearly when our bodies are pumped full of adrenaline. We just don't. And I've noticed that for anxious thinking, my biggest hurdle is expecting my mind to work in a calm state when I'm pumped full of adrenaline. That's like expecting to be able to sleep when you've had 14 cups of coffee. <laughs> it's just not something that works. It's just not. It's not something that realistically is even possible. So understanding the chemical side of anxious thinking and anxious behavior and, and just of adrenaline. In, in the Panic the Power book and Battlefield the Mind book, all of these talk about the body's physiological response to fear. Whether it's a real threat or a perceived threat. That's a whole different thing, the perceived threat. But this topic isn't about anxiety. I've talked about anxiety in previous episodes, so you can dig into that subject better. I just think anxiety is a good, a good example of not being able to see clearly. The mind is like water. When it's turbulent, it's difficult to see. So when we are in a frame of mind that is unstable for whatever reason, chemically, through anxiety, depression, sadness... Fear, anger, jealousy. It is very difficult to see. We first need to learn how to process those emotions in a healthy way. Before we can start to honestly make decisions. There's a really popular saying. That God gives us that five to ten seconds to react or before we react to make a decision. We have that five to second period of time in which the emotions flood us and we get to make a decision in those five to ten seconds as to whether we're going to react or how we're going to react. And those five to ten seconds are precious. And one of the most powerful emotional tools we can have is awareness of our emotional state. Is awareness of this turbulence that makes it difficult to see. Are we furious? Are we terrified? Are, are, do we feel the adrenaline pumping through our veins. If we are, maybe we just need to stop. Because here's the nasty side effect of adrenaline and anxiety and depression is those emotions need to run their course. Just like caffeine in our system. When a chemical pumps into our system, we have to wait for that chemical to run its course. Same is true for hormones. Like if you have a teenager, a teenage kid, you understand this. Berating them because they have hormones, an emotional response, will just pump more adrenaline into their system. So like the best thing we can do is say, so what, what emotions are you feeling right now? And do we need to wait a, a small amount of time for you to calm down? And you don't mean it in like a negative way. It's just like, do we need to give ourselves some time for these chemicals to process in our system so then we can make calmer decisions based upon what happened? This is an incredibly useful emotional tool. And it's not something we will do perfectly. But it's something that is incredibly powerful for us to be aware of when our systems are being pumped full of this adrenaline or anger or home hormones or whatever it might be. It's incredibly beneficial for us to be able to take that awareness and then just wait. Say, oh man, 
even if for me, it's actually frustrating now because I'm, I am aware of it. So when something triggers my anxiety and there are triggers, we have triggers, by the way, that, that pump all this, these chemicals into our system. When it happens to me, it's like, oh man, now I get to wait for this to run its course. It can take minutes. It can take hours. It can take days sometimes to process some levels of adrenaline, especially if we're on the hamster wheel, I like to call it, where we continue to feed the anxiety or jealousy or anger or fear. And so it just restokes the adrenaline. And it's like, great, now I have to wait again. And then it restokes the adrenaline. And it does feel like you're in a trap. Because the adrenaline can trigger the anxiety. And then the anxiety can trigger more adrenaline. Then the adrenaline can trigger more anxiety. It's the same thing with the fighting loop or the anger loop. The anger can trigger the adrenaline. Then the adrenaline can trigger more anger. And then the anger can trigger more adrenaline. Or our reaction or overreaction to it will trigger all of those emotions worse. So when if we, if we keep feeding the turbulence, things will be continue to be murky and unclear. It'll make it continually make things difficult to see. So learning to separate ourselves from situations and people, at least temporarily. So that we can process these emotions is incredibly beneficial and helpful. My wife is far better at this than I am. She always has been. She's been better at walking away from things. And actually, that would actually trigger my anger more (laughs) in the relationship. But really, I think she just understood her emotions well enough to be able to realize that, like, if I keep participating in this, I'm going to say something that I regret. Or I'm going to say things that are going to make it worse. So she understood better than I did that she needed to separate herself from a a situation to calm down. Because when we're calm, everything does become clearer. It doesn't mean everything becomes instantly clear. But we certainly do think more clearly. Obviously, you don't want to take any of these to an extreme. And and there's also a lot of benefit in talking to professionals who, let's face it, they went to school to study this stuff. It doesn't mean, something is, it doesn't mean we're psychotic because we talk to a psychiatrist. There is a specific definition of psychosis. It is a pr- pretty clearly defined definition. You can look it up if you'd like. And there are different levels of psychosis. And just like if you go to a doctor, it doesn't mean you have cancer and you're dying. You go to a doctor for a diagnosis. <laughs> That's why we go to doctors. We go to the doc- doctors to determine whether or not we are healthy or not. Whether we are experiencing normal physical symptoms of life or whether what we're experiencing is abnormal to get a proper diagnosis so we don't treat ourselves improperly for a condition. This is why we go to doctors for our health. The same is true for our mental health. If we go to a doctor, we don't go to a doctor because we're psychotic. And maybe we are psychotic. We I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. We go to a doctor because... A doctor is going to help us navigate our emotions to determine whether or not we have a condition. And if we do, what the best course of action we can take to deal with that condition. By the way, all of this stuff is not permanent. If you're diagnosed with an anxiety disorder, it could be temporary. It could be a life situation. It could be a death in your family. It could be a past trauma. Like you can work through these issues and actually get closure on them and put them behind you. Not arguably most mental issues are not chronic. They're not life sentences. They're just things we need to learn to deal with. 
and maybe we do carry them around with us for the rest of our lives, but wouldn't it be nice to have a set of emotional tools to deal with them as they come up? One of the best decisions I made, <clears throat> probably in my early 30s, well, I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety by my general doctor in my 20s, and he was, he was awesome. He was a great doctor. He helped me determine a medicine that was good for me, and it wasn't a habit-forming medicine, thank God. It was a, it was a just a, a generalized medication for the, the issue that took weeks to start working, and then it, it, it worked for me. And it definitely worked for me. But I still had episodes. And, and one of the best decisions I made was to go to a professional, a, somebody who specialized in this. And I found a doctor online based on reviews. I looked up local doctors in the area and I spoke to a few of them. I found somebody whom I thought would hopefully be a good fit. And he turned out to be an awesome fit for my personality. And he helped me through some really, really hard times that I was, I was going through it. The, like I've talked about that marriage goes through seasons. He helped me through some harder seasons of my marriage. He helped me find the lowest effective dose of my medicine. He helped me determine whether my medicine was even appropriate for me. I was able to refine and figure out other tools that I could use that weren't medication to better cope with life. Because life is hard. It's scary. Everybody's got to deal with the unknowns. If we don't deal with them, chaos is lurking around every corner. <clears throat> and sometimes the rug just gets pulled out from under us. My whole point to this is There is no shame in asking for or seeking out help. There's wisdom in that. And if you talk to a doctor and you, you just don't feel like it's matching up or you don't agree with him, talk to a different doctor. Psychology is not an exact science. It's not like biology where they can literally look at your blood and diagnose a condition based upon your genetics or your DNA. That's not how emotional health works in most cases. Now, there are genetic emotional conditions, of course, and there is biology in it. I'm not a psychologist or a therapist. I just, there is a level of a biology in psychological conditions, but a lot of that is also intertwined with our emotional tools and the way we deal with and respond to life situations. It is a, it is a very complex science. And sometimes we're just not qualified to do it on our own. I can tell you self-dialogue and communication with a higher power is helpful. I don't know if you're religious or not. I am a Christian. Having a personal God that I can have conversations with. Well, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Wisdom Worth Knowing is brought to you by Amazon Audible. If you're like me and you love reading but don't have the time because but then audio audiobooks may be the perfect solution for you. With Audible, listening is the new reading. You can pop in your earbuds and discover that next exciting adventure or expand your knowledge from any PC, Mac, Android, Alexa, or Apple device. And check this out. Because you listen to this show, for a limited time, you can get an instant access to thousands of audiobooks from Audible's Premium Plus catalog completely free. Just visit audible.wisdomworthknowing.org right now and take advantage of a free 30-day trial. That's right, for 30 days you'll get full access to Audible's Premium Plus catalog as well as an additional free title of your choosing. If you discover audiobooks aren't for you, no problem. You can cancel, you can cancel instantly online. That's it. It's that simple. Two years ago, audiobooks began to change my life and they may change yours too. Pause this podcast and head over to Audible. That's A U D I B L E, A U D I B L E dot wisdomworthknowing dot org and sign up right now. What are you waiting for? I mentioned a few books earlier in the episode and they're all on audiobook. Actually, I listen to them once a year. 
by the way, with audiobooks, you can slow them down and speed them up, which is really helpful if the reader is really fast. And so a lot of times I'll just kick on an audiobook in the background and I might pick up just bits and pieces. But if you listen to the book multiple times, you eventually you pick it all up. The convenience is just so awesome. I highly, highly recommend it. I do mean it when I said it changed my life. There's a lot of books that I never would have read had I not been able to listen to them, especially since I got a full-time job, family, kids. It's just being able to sit down and read a book, although it would be nice, it's not something that's just in my current life situation. It's not doable. So I want to talk a little bit more about this personal relationship with God thing. There's a lot of benefit in self-dialogue and and having conversations with God, whether it's in the car or just in the privacy of your own home. As Christians, we have direct access to him. We don't need to go to church. I'm, I'm not saying there's not value in church. There's tremendous value in church, especially on a community and relational standpoint. But we do not need to go to a building in order to have conversation with God. Jesus clearly specified in the Bible that the, the body is the temple. We carry it around with us everywhere we go, which is amazing. If we've accepted Christ, we have the Holy Spirit, who is the helper. And the Holy Spirit doesn't always speak to us clearly. Many times we don't even have the words to articulate what we are thinking and feeling. It takes weeks, months, years to even understand what is being spoken to us. But the point of this is, is we have direct communion to have a conversation, and a conversation is prayer. Just conversation with God. Another fantastic emotional tool to help us work through stuff. Have you tried just dumping your anger and sadness and frustration on him? Have you ever just tried that? I've been in screaming matches with the guy at certain stages of my life. He can take it. He knows us. We're humans. He made us. He, he made emotions, by the way. He created our emotional responses to things. Even Christ cried, wept blood, sweat blood. Well, I shouldn't say wept blood. He sweat blood. He grieved. Lazarus died. He wept. These are not signs of of weakness. Emotions are not. They're feedback. They're ways for our souls to process Information and things we do not understand or do not yet understand. So that's something to really consider. Have you even tried it? Try it for a week or a month. See how how it affects you. And if you don't want to go to a church, fine. Just get a Bible, a free one. They're everywhere. It's also free online. And just read what Christ said. Don't, do not. He is probably the most misrepresented person in history. It was amazing to me when I first opened up the Bible and just read what the man said for himself. I was like, holy cow. Literally nobody represents this guy properly. Christians or non-Christians alike. He is the most misrepresented individual in history, arguably, by far. And the reason is because it will give you some insight to the character of God. So it'll at least give you some insight into who you're talking to. And if you're not a Christian, that's totally fine. Guess what? He will still listen to you. It actually is amazing. I was agnostic for most of my youth. Atheist and then agnostic and then atheist and then skeptic. And I still had conversations with him and he still listened to me. I can say that now, 17, 20 years later. So... I don't want to get too religious on the show, but that is an emotional tool that's been beneficial for me. Something worth considering. So the mind is like water. When it's turbulent, it's difficult to see. When it's calm, everything becomes clear. You're listening to the Wisdom Worth Knowing podcast. I'm your host, Craig Chamberlain. You can subscribe on all the major social networks. That's Facebook, YouTube, and Rumble. You can also subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. The show is brought to you by Audible, where listening is the new reading. Get unlimited access to thousands of audiobooks completely free for 30 days. When you're done listening to this episode, sign up 
at audible.wisdomworthknowing.org. A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot wisdomworthknowing.org. So until next time, remember the mind is like water. When it's turbulent, it's difficult to see. When it's calm, everything becomes clear. And let's work on being the best version of ourselves we can today because that's all we can do. I will see you in the next episode.